It's a, a very powerful Pavnami or the full moon night because the shifting of Dakshinayana and the first, second, the first three Pavnamis till the equinox are of certain significance for those who are doing internal things within themselves. This Pavnami, as I've said many times before, is the day when Adiyogi, who was a yogi, was kind of compelled to become a guru. So he chose an appropriate day. If you want to sit outside in open skies and talk to people, would you choose a Pavnami or an Amavasya? Please tell me. Naturally, isn't it? That's not the only reason. It is also, as I already said, the gravitational pull is such that people are more perceptive on that day. Amavasya is just the reverse of that. So is Amavasya bad? No, it is very good for certain purposes. But not to make you sit outside like this and talk to you in open air, then Pavnami is good. And above all, it is the first Pavnami of what we call as Sadhana Pada, that is after summer solstice. This is the first Pornami or the full moon. So it is at summer solstice time, because of the shift that is happening in the planetary quality, a yogi always little rejigs himself. All life rejigs itself. Even your own body does it. Whether you will notice it or not is the only question. But when you pass through solstice, the body will make a little adjustment. To, to flourish well in the new conditions that are happening. Because the way the planet is influenced by the sun and various other planets shifts and changes twice a year, what is referred to as summer solstice and winter solstice. And uh, on that day when he is making those changes, he suddenly noticed the seven people are still waiting after many, many years. That year, the solstice day and uh, the full moon were on the same day as it was uh, a year or two years ago. So he decided they have been waiting for many years without him uttering a word or showing any interest in them. Still they are waiting. That means they have realized the possibility. They are not going to leave because they have realized the possibility they have not come for entertainment, they know what is waiting for them. So he decided, okay, and he turned into a guru and the first guru, Adi Yogi become the Adi Guru on this night. So it happened to be a Purnami and isn't it wonderful? And also, the way the tradition organized itself is, in Sadhana Pada, that is from here onwards, all the Amavasyas are important because you're doing sadhana. In Kaivalya Pada, where blossoming, blossoming is supposed to happen, all Purnamis are important. There is Taipusam, there is a Buddha Purnami, there is Guru Purnami, there are many important Purnamis. In that part, which is the northern run of the sun, in the southern run, this is important because Sun is in the wrong place. Wrong is not the word, sun is in another place. So the moon being in a counter place, that becomes important. So, I mean, you, you have to look at the geometry of this, how it works. You will see there is some sense to this and there is some value to this. Because this is how life responds, not just you, all life responds this way. So, Parnami is not only for the guru, it is for blossoming. So all Guru Purnima, Buddha Purnima, uh, Danya Purnima, all these are suggesting enlightenment. Buddha Purnima means the day Buddha got enlightened. Danya Purnami is a day many, many sages and seers got enlightened on that day or they left on that day, they any number. So Purnami nights, these things happen more easily. So Purnami is seen as the day of blossoming. Amavasya is seen as the day of hard work to do about yourself. So, Guru Namaskar. The moon or the celestial dance partner has captivated humanity for millennia. Its ever-changing phases 
from the dark embrace of the new moon to the radiant fullness of the full moon have inspired myths legends and spiritual practices across cultures but which lunar phase is supreme the truth is both the new moon and the full moon hold unique energetic vibrations offering distinct opportunities for introspection manifestation and growth the new moon covered in darkness marks the beginning of a new lunar cycle it is a time of potent beginnings a cosmic invitation to plant seeds of intention and set intentions for the week ahead it's an ideal time for introspection for connecting with our inner wisdom and for setting clear goals that align with our soul's yearning as the moon waxes gaining light each night it mirrors our own journey of expansion and manifestation we tend to feel more energized motivated and inspired to take action on the intentions we set during the new moon this is a time for putting in the work for nurturing our dreams with consistent effort and focused action the full moon in all its glory represents culmination illumination and release it's a time when emotions are amplified and our intuition is heightened the full moon illuminates the progress we have made since the new moon revealing both the fruits of our labor and the areas where we might need to make adjustments it's an opportunate time for gratitude for celebrating our achievements and for releasing anything that no longer serves our highest good just as the moon wanes after reaching fullness the period following the full moon is a time for surrender reflection and letting go it's a natural cycle of release a time to shed old patterns limiting beliefs and anything that might be hindering our growth therefore declaring one moon phase superior to the other is like choosing between the inhale and the exhale both are essential components for a complete breath just as both the new moon and the full moon are integral parts of a unified lunar cycle by attuning ourselves to the ebb and flow of the lunar cycle embracing the unique energetic qualities of both the new moon and full moon we can harness their power to illuminate our path manifest our dreams and live in greater harmony with the natural rhythm of the cosmos namaskaram